Hey everybody, thanks for joining me for the next video in the Hand in Hand watercolor series. Today we're going to be painting this little guy from the set and our family is growing. We have finished the lady and the man and the little girl and now it's this little guy's turn and he's so cute in his little jacket and his boots and so we're going to make him nice and bright and fun. I think we'll go ahead and give him a bright yellow jacket and maybe some bright green rain boots. What little boy doesn't need a pair of bright green rain boots? So let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, I think we'll give him a really bright yellow jacket. So I'm going to start over here on his right shoulder, which kind of seems to be where I start all of these characters. I don't know why, it's just kind of it feels like a good starting point to me. So I'm going to start there and I'm taking some really, really bright yellow and we'll just go ahead and work our way from light to a little bit of darker, um, darker gold uh, to the shadowed side of the image like we have been doing with the other images. I'm sticking with the same value sketch that I made initially for all of our images. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with all of these uh, when I'm finished. I might use them on the same project together or I might use them on individual projects. I'm not sure yet, but we're going to use the same value sketch or the same light source for all of the images and that way if we do end up using them together they will be nice and cohesive. So you can see here I'm just filling in his jacket and again once again I'm leaving his hood and we will do that as a separate step just because we want a really nice defined edge in between his jacket and his hood and that's easier to accomplish that if you paint it in two separate steps. And so I'm just working over here and getting some deeper golds kind of on this shadowed side of him. I'll continue filling in his arm. While that's still wet, I'm going to drop in some deeper kind of reddish orange along that shadow side again and making sure to get especially where that hood, where his little hood would cast a shadow. Now I didn't really leave white areas um, like I have done on the other images and I might be kind of regretting that but we'll see how it works out. I was not really paying attention as I was going along and I just kind of filled that all in but I think we can create some kind of folds and shadows um, using some darker colors maybe this time and we'll see how that works out. So I'm just kind of working those colors together a little bit and dropping kind of more of that dark red, reddish orange, especially into the bottom kind of hem area over here and under his arm. So that is getting a little darker, a little more orange than I was hoping to so I'm going to take my brush and uh, my brush is drier than my paper and so I can use a drier brush to just pull out a little bit of that color and lighten it up a little bit. I'm going to give his, the underside of his arm a little bit of shading on both arms and then just clean up my edges a little bit. Okay, so we want to let that dry. Uh, I want to add more detail later, but not while it's wet, uh, so we'll let that dry. We'll go ahead and move down here to his boots, and like I said, we're going to give him some bright green rain boots, and so I'm starting out with just a really nice bright green. Um, I'll just kind of give those a wash. Um, his right boot here has um, the sole is visible. He's taking a step with his little foot there and so you can see the bottom of his sole and we'll come back later and paint that a darker color. So I'm just filling in the boot um, portion of it with this kind of bright green and just give it a wash. Um, I'm not probably going to try to add a lot of shading while this is wet because that area is so small. I think if I try to drop in uh, color to create shading while it's wet, it's just going to kind of flood that whole area. And so I will probably uh, add more shading once this is dry. So I'll give his left boot also a wash of that nice bright green. 
And then I'll try to get some deeper color down towards the bottom where it meets uh, the street door, the surface that he's walking on, because every object uh, creates a shadow as it hits its surface. And so you always want to make sure that the bottom part of an object, such as a bottom of a foot touching uh, the ground, is really nice and dark and has kind of that realistic shadow very at the very base of it. But we will come back later and add a lot darker color down there at the bottom uh, soles of the boots. But for now I'm just kind of continuing to build up that green color and we might go ahead and let that dry for now and then come back. I'm actually going to be doing some shading on those green boots using a blue paint, which seems a little strange, but using a different color such as blue over green can just give your image more interest rather than using kind of monotonous or um, similar colors. You can really kind of play around with uh, getting more interest in your images that way. So I am kind of pulling out a little bit of paint in the highlighted side of those boots because they got a little bit dark. So I was taking a drier brush there and kind of pulling out a little bit of paint. So now we're going to move up and work on his hair and I'm going to be using the same colors that I used on the other characters so far for his hair. We'll start out, so we'll start out with some gold, some yellow ochre, and then we'll kind of work into some reddish browns and then some deeper browns down on the shadow side and where his uh, hairline kind of meets his neck to give that some definition. So here I'm dropping in that deeper color down in his neck to really define that area and give his head kind of that uh, round shaded, uh, give it some shading to appear round. And really give that the depth and dimension. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to leave his hair for now. I will probably come back and add a little bit more once that's dry, but we'll move on for now. We're going to work a little bit more on his jacket. I'm not real happy with the color of his jacket. It turned a little more orange than I was really kind of hoping for. I was kind of wanting a nice bright um, yellow. And so I might kind of go in here and try to change the tone of it just a little bit. I'm going to take a really, really bright yellow, which is this sounds kind of strange, but it's kind of a cool yellow. Now, I never really thought there was cool yellows. To me, yellow is just a really warm color, but there are cooler and warmer shades of yellow. So to kind of offset that orange, I'm going to go in with that really bright yellow and paint over what was already finished and try to get rid of a little bit of that orange glow or that orange reddish color that I'm not real happy with. And then I'll use some yellow ochre over on this side to go over um, some of that orange as well and just take away a little bit of that real reddish orange glow that we had going on here. And I think this is helping. So we'll leave that for now and when it's dry I'm going to come back in and create some kind of folds in the fabric and such with some shading. Um, but we'll do that once it's dry otherwise it's just going to bleed together. So we'll go back down to his boots and add a little bit of shading and detail to his boots. Uh, like I said before, I'm using actually a blue, kind of a bright blue, uh, for the shading on the shadow side of those boots. It gives it a really interesting color. They still come off very much green, but the shadows just have more interest to them. Pulling out a little bit of color, a little bit of that green. It's a little dark and I just want to pull a little bit out to create kind of a highlight there. So those are looking pretty good. We're going to move on up to his shorts here let those dry and I'm going to give his shorts kind of a denim look 
You have different options for how you want to color those, of course. You could make them kind of a khaki color or denim or red or just anything. But I'm going to start, I'm going to give them kind of a denim look. And I'm starting with my Mayan blue and just giving those a wash all over of the Mayan blue. Now again, while that's still wet, dropping in some of that Payne's gray onto the shadowed areas, especially kind of under his jacket there, where it would fall in the shadow. Now my jacket must be a little bit wet. I'm getting a little bit of bleeding up into the jacket, so I'm going to have to be really careful. I'm going to try to avoid getting too close to that yellow. We might have to come back and finish that a little bit later. I really want to add some darker shading up under that edge of that jacket, but I also don't want to get so close that it's going to bleed into there. So to be really careful in that area right now it is still a little bit wet. I'm just continuing to add some shading using the Payne's Gray now kind of on the shadow side of his right leg and creating some darker areas. Alright so now we're going to go up and get his skin with some skin tone. He has a little bit in his neck area here and then he also has two little hands. These areas are really, really small, but it can help to make an image pop if you can also capture a little bit of shading in these tiny areas as well. I tried to catch some uh, sh shadowing, shading over on the left side of his neck, which would be in shadow. So now I think we'll go ahead and work on his hood. I'm starting out again with that really bright yellow over on the right side, the bright side of our image. And I'm going to try to leave some little areas unpainted for highlights like we've done in the past. I'll work to make it darker as I work towards the left side. Kind of working in some of those orangish reds, reddish oranges. Trying not to get too carried away with those like I did on the jacket though. And we'll try to create some kind of uh, looking like folds in that hood. So I have a little bit too much of that red color. I'm going to kind of pull that out with my brush. And then I don't want to overwork this area. I'm probably going to kind of leave it as is for now and then come back and add some more details later. I'll just clean up my edges a little bit here. So now let's go down and finish the soles of his his little boots. I'm going to take a real dark, uh, I think this might be indigo or sepia or maybe even just a little bit of black. I have quite a mix of colors in my palette at this point and I'm not always sure what's what. But we're just going for a real dark color and then of course again we're going to try to catch really really deep color, deep shadows down where his toe is meeting the street or the cement or whatever he's walking on. Of course that would be in the deepest shadow part. And then I'm going to add just a tiny bit of that dark color over on the left boot as well, just way at the bottom where the sole would be. You can see where that just really kind of makes that image come to life and that just adds a little bit of pop. Those tiny little details can be kind of what really makes an image uh, come to life. I'm going to add just a little more shading with that blue onto those green boots. And then I think we can go ahead and work on his legs. His boots are not terribly wet. And most of that was kind of done with a dry, drier brush shading. And so his, his boots are not, not wet. So we can go ahead and work on his legs. And I'm just going to give them a wash with some flesh colored paint, which is just kind of my yellow ochre mixed with a little bit of se uh, burnt sienna. And then I'll drop in a little bit of darker, more intense color right under where his shorts meet his leg, which would cast a shadow, and then a little bit also along the left shadow side 
of his legs. So now we're going to go back up into this area where the, his jacket meets his shorts, where I was having a little bit of uh, my color bleeding together, and we're going to try to define that area a little more, and I'm going to add almost some browns to that yellow over in that dark area at the bottom of the hem. And then I'll also add some kind of just real light strokes, and we'll go for that the look of fabric folds and try to capture that using just a few little strokes. And you can see how now that just kind of brings that image to life and just makes it really interesting. <clears throat> I also want to add a little bit of depth of color where, so we'll do the same thing in his hood and add a little more detailing in there. And again, I'm using just kind of a light brown and going to give some kind of folds and detailing in there. I really want to darken up kind of under that hood. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to add just a little uh, more paint gray onto his shorts here where it's kind of under the hem of his jacket, just to kind of define that area a little bit more. Also, his left leg is kind of um, behind his right leg, which would be ca casting a little more of a shadow on that side. And so we'll try to capture that with a little more shading on that side also. And then I think before we call it good, I'm going to add just a little more uh, deeper color up where his neck meets his hairline. I feel like that is too much of the same color there and it just needs a little bit of pop to define that area. And so we'll add just some real dark brown into that area and then blend it out. And I think he is finished. Our little guy is all ready to go play in the puddles. And so we just have our little dog left and our umbrella. And then we will have finished all of the images.